He's me, me, me. Donald Trump is all about Donald Trump. He does not give a shit about the rest of us. Mr. Steele, we're on a lot of M and FM stations. We're able to catch that, but but uh, please, oh, please. I apologize. I apologize. No, Donald no, no, no. I know you're used to Europe and stuff, where people can say whatever they want. Care, does not care about the rest of us. One of the big mistakes that he's making is he thinks he can get away with just himself and what he knows. Jim Webb has the same problem when Jim Webb says that he's his own national security advisor. There, I, that is a sign of my effort to help Trump. What do you Trump make of the former Defense Secretary Gates coming out? I don't even know if that's true, but uh, and saying Obama calls everybody in and says, "I'm smarter than you. I can do my, you know, the, the, all your jobs better." <clears throat> well, I agree. I, look, see, part of the part of the problem is ever since the assassination of John F. Kennedy, every president has been a puppet. Uh, from Jimmy Carter to Ronald Reagan, they've all been puppets. And they are all also on these massive ego trips. Um, Chris Hedges has written a great book called Empire of Illusion, uh, The Loss of Literacy and the Triumph of Spectacle. All of these presidents think that they're some kind of decider. They're not. The decisions are being made by Rockefeller and others in Wall Street and the city of London. And these guys are just extremely highly paid actors. Now, I think Trump has the power to win. If he were, for example, to take Cynthia McKinney as his vice president, a great woman of color from Georgia, and if he were to name a coalition cabinet and field a balanced budget and push electoral reform, I mean, one of the problems with every single senator running for president is that not a single one of them has been willing to introduce an electoral reform act in Congress. You know, it's funny you say that because up until like the 30s and stuff, that's what used to happen is if somebody wanted to win, say they were a Democrat or Republican, they would end up taking one of the leaders from the other party in a coalition government and make them the vice president. Why does it that happen that anymore? That was constitutionally mandated. The runner up became vice president. Sure. And we had the senators representing the states. Exactly. So they got rid of that okay. around the same time, too. For people that don't know, that's important. The state legislatures used to elect the senators, showing that state checkmate, that check. Yes. Yeah. That's why I want a constitutional convention. And I'm telling you, Alex, if the governor of Texas will connect with Mike Levin and Sheldon Adelson, who I actually think is going to be a huge force in this in this uh, election, one of the things that has to be settled before we have an election is Israel. Israel is the third rail in American politics. And I believe we have to have a constitutional convention. We have to have a truth and reconciliation meeting on Israel and Palestine. We have to make some decisions on how we're going to be not funding the Saudi Arabian sponsorship of terrorism and, and subsidizing. Oh, yeah, let me ask you that question. Looking at this fog, is the U.S. really allied with the Saudis or the Iranians? Or are they playing it off as a uh, Sunni Shiite civil war? Right now, I think the United States government is actively sponsoring ISIS as a destabilizing. Force. So they're really not in the deal with Iran. Well, you know, Iran is the adult in the neighborhood. Uh, I'm sorry, but I went to I went to college with Iranian engineers, and those are some of the smartest guys on the planet. These are stable, sensible people, and those who who are trying to. I agree, and like eighty percent of them hate their government. How are these super smart people, as smart as they come, they invented chess, run by a bunch of you know guys who haven't lived in caves? I mean, no, Alex, ask yourself why we're run by a bunch of morons in Washington. Okay, we're all abdicating our responsibility as citizens. We are all sitting by the wayside. I just had an exchange on LinkedIn with this guy that thinks Bernie Sanders is the cat's meow. I think Bernie Sanders is a fraud. Sanders is totally committed to the two-party tyranny, and nobody, including Rachel Maddow, wants to discuss the fact that the two-party tyranny has disenfranchised 60% of Americans, including all Latinos, all blacks, all women, and all youth. All I know is... Bernie Sanders doesn't talk about crony capitalism. He says capitalism's the problem. Our problem is crony capitalism. Look, Bernie Sanders, actually, whether Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders or Ted Cruz, I would vote for anybody that agreed to restore integrity to our electoral process. Now, that's the other problem with Bernie Sanders is he wants to create a bigger government with more welfare, 
and more government regulation and more government mandates. So he's really a light version. I've got a wonderful cartoon, which you've probably got around someplace, of this big bird with its claws on Capitol Hill. And one wing of the bird is red and one wing of the bird is blue. And, and the caption is one, one, um, one bird, two wings, same. And I'll spell it, Alex. I don't know. No, if don't do it. Same, bird. same poop. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to some phone calls real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to John in New York. Go ahead. You're on the air with former CIA field commander, Robert David Steele, robertdavidsteele.com. Hi, you guys. Uh, I have in my hand here a piece of paper, a uh, news release, and I'm wondering if this uh, times in with a false flag in uh, San Bernardino. And I'm wondering also if this is uh, fuel for impeachment to get Mr. Obama out of office as promptly as possible. The article says here, nuclear plant shut down after 10 control rods accidentally fall into reactor core. That's enough to... Uh, uh, put United States out of business uh, within 24 hours, caused by a smoldering event, fire brigade on scene. Incident of this type could lead to overheating potentially resulting. Where is this? Where is this? When, when did this happen? Uh, this happened on December the 7th. You know, that's the thing. They admit all these reactors are rotting, basically. There's all these disasters happening. And used to it be national news. Do the elite think radiation uh, laws of nature have changed, Mr. Steele? No, and, and part of the, my favorite word in the English language is integrity. Now, Chernobyl and Fukushima have taken us into new places. Fukushima is poisoning the entire Pacific Ocean, the entire West Coast. The uh, federal government is now uh, undermining all of its radiation control standards. But Ann Coulter said the Japanese should thank him because it's good for you. <laughs> I know. Don't make me go there. Look, Alex, the bottom line here is that the entire U.S. culture has become a cheating culture. That's actually a title of a book. That's it, it is. We no, we no longer stand for anything, whether it's New York values or Texas values. And we lie to ourselves and think radiation won't hurt our kids. Exactly right. Or vaccines or poisons on the supermarket. So, so here's the bottom line. We have got to convene a national conversation in which we focus on restoring the Constitution, which includes the runner-up as vice president and the senators as representatives of the states. We have to demand that the federal stop owning land and stop taxing citizens. I actually think it's unconstitutional for the federal government to tax individual citizens. We are the United States of America. Well, it is. It is until 1913. You're absolutely on target. And people have grown up in slavery so long, they don't even know that what we're saying is what made America so great. Well, I can't say this enough times. The governor of Texas and Mike Levin and you and a few others have the power with, with Sheldon Adelson to bring us all together in a virtual constitutional convention, not an actual constitutional convention, but a virtual constitutional convention in March in Texas. Let's get all this on the table. And again, even if it was just ceremonial, it would have so much attention to it as, 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 a, just, as a debate. You can't lose because then it isn't even binding, but you started the first wave. Are you prepared? The third hour is coming up. And then, of course, we have the fourth hour hosted by Anthony Gucciardi today, InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time this evening. And, of course, we have the weekend 4 to 6 p.m. Central radio show that I host, and I will be hosting that this weekend. Uh, David Knight and Leanne McAdoo will be in Flint, Michigan tomorrow uh, covering where they're trying to cause divide and conquer race stuff over the horrible poison water the government was feeding people, uh, was giving them to have, and then telling them it was fine. That's what they do across the board. But they want to turn it into a race issue. Uh, fine, if that gets attention to it. You know, I finally agree with Michael Moore. It is genocide. But what about the 40% of people that are there that are white or Hispanic? Oh, it's when 60% are black, it's genocide. So then I don't agree with more. Is it genocide if it was 60% white in the town? It's, 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 it's an attack on us. And, and folks, there is social engineering going on through the water. They make jokes about it, Dr. Strangelove. It's really going on, ladies and gentlemen. It's really happening. They admit fluoride's doing all this. And coming up, Dr. Grip's going to be in the studio to talk about that, how it affects fertility, 
uh, and more. He's going to be with us for a little bit of this segment and the next segment, and then Mr. Steele's going to leave us. I want to get him up every few months just to talk about uh, news. In fact, I want to get him up next week if he can do it, uh, just to get into false flags itself, some of his CIA stories that he can get into with us. I want to go to a few more calls right now, but I cannot stress enough to you that we've reached an event horizon point, not just for this show, but for liberty-based media, period. If you continue to tell friends and family and neighbors and on your Facebook posts and Twitter about Infowars.com forward slash show, if you continue to say, hey, you want the answers, it's here. People are ready to hear it now. We have tripled online audiences with audio and video feeds the last three months. Normally, it maybe doubles in a year if we're lucky. We've been growing exponential, tripling the last three, three and a half months at a scary level. So expenses go up as well with bandwidth, so please Please support us financially by shopping at InfoWarsStore.com, but keep spreading the word. And, and Mr. Steele, I want to go to a few calls here in this segment and the next, but the few minutes we have left, the experience I'm having of our audience exploding and Chris Carter coming out and saying the new X-Files is based on Alex Jones. We reached out to him. He says he you know, is his admirer, big listener. We're going to hook up. The fact that just myself as a ping, as a culture person, it's not me, 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 but I'm saying you know, who, who Alex Jones is is getting so big is an example of how the establishment's losing the info war. Do you agree with that statement? I do agree with that statement. They are losing the info war. And what's happening, I mean, look at, look at ABC. What's happening is they're not controlling everybody. So the national news media had witnesses on national television talking about three white paramilitary-dressed men shooting up San Bernardino. And then the FEMA, whoever it is that's running the narrative, swoops in. Of course, the FBI is already there, and they stop that narrative. And too many American citizens don't notice the disconnect, okay? But it's happening more and more often. And so I think they are losing the narrative. And I think that if Texas were to sponsor a national conversation, I think we could actually mobilize most of the country into paying attention. Well, we need to support the governor and his call for a con con for real with the states. But I agree, host a summit about a con con and, and discuss what the states would do there to generate. I mean, that's how you do it. We need a pre-convention. Do a dry run. Absolutely. And that dry run will then define the thing. Because one of the problems that we have is that these Republican and Democratic debates are low-level idiocy. Uh, not a single candidate can actually discuss the 10 high-level threats to humanity or the 12 core policy domains or why Latinos, women, blacks, and children are being screwed by the existing policies and by their planned policies. Not a single one of them has actually got a full employment plan for this country. So I think a pre-conference, a dry run of a constitutional convention- Robert David Steele, stay there. We're gonna come back and take a few phone calls. And there's the info war. If you are a PrisonPlanet.tv viewer watching the live feed or watching an InfoWars.com forward slash show, you can see the InfoWars News Center. And that is just one wing. We have three other rooms and a fourth being set up right now, crammed full of patriots, scanning the news, putting information on social media, running shows, getting clips together, producing reports, editing video, talking to investigative journalists. Lining up Cy Hirsch, lining up Donald Trump, lining up Ted Cruz, lining up Rand Paul, just in here building real media and telling you what we think, not hiding our bias to promote liberty and freedom. Robert David Steele's our guest, uh, robertdavidsteele.com. He also has his other great news sites you can link through there. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Paul in Arizona, then Jim and others. Paul, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, may God bless you. I have a question for Mr. Steele. We all know that Libya had a boatload of gold. And does do we know where the gold is now after he's been assassinated? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure we took it. That's right. Every time there's a war and everything gets looted, no one asks where all the antiquities or the gold or the treasury money went. It's just default to not ask questions. No, I mean, we, we ran out of gold, and, and there's there's very strong rumors that Tim Geithner, when he was at the uh, Fed in New York, was actually selling false gold. Tungsten. Titanium covered with gold sheeting. Uh, I don't think Fort Knox has any gold in it. 
Um, so I do believe that a lot of gold was stolen in 9-11 by prior 